So from multi-cloud connections to some EFS improvements to Gen AI applications, as well as some CloudFormation starter kits, this month's roundup has a little something for everybody. Hey there, AWS enthusiasts. Welcome back to CoCloud's Keeping Up with AWS series. Today, we are diving into the August 2024 edition of AWS Tidbits. As always, we've got a packed lineup of exciting updates, new features, and valuable resources to keep you at the cutting edge of AWS technologies, particularly from a DevOps bit. So we'll be exploring eight key highlights that showcased AWS's continuous innovation and commitment to empowering you know, operations and developers and businesses alike. So let's get started. Okay, number one is a blog about AWS and multi-cloud. So this is a list of connections that can be attached to specific services inside of AWS. So if we click on this, right, what's going to happen is that we're going to see basically a step-by-step -step list of what can actually hook into what from a third-party cloud perspective. So for example, can DataSync touch Google Cloud Storage or Azure Files or any of those pieces? Yes, it can right? What about other services like Glue? Are there any integrations there? Yes, there are actually. So this is the list of basically external data sources and other cloud connections, including things like Google and Azure and Oracle and Alibaba that Amazon AWS services can actually hook into. So a useful list if you need it, you probably just want to like bookmark it and know that it's there. But if you're looking for a specific integration, especially since multi-cloud is very popular right now, this is where you're going to look. Okay. So that was number one. Number two is actually just a feature notification because I like to keep you appraised of features that might affect either architecturally, security, or operationally how you would do things on AWS. And so number two is actually EFS, the Elastic File System, which is a service that basically just provides enterprise-level NFS, now supports 30 gigabits of read access. So AWS is increasing their, their read throughput to that 30 gigabits mainly for AI and ML workloads, but quite frankly, it's for anybody who needs that level of throughput where you need you know, multiple servers accessing a shared and network-based file system. Number three. Well, number three is a tutorial where you basically can use infrastructure as code to build a travel support agent. So I'm going to click into this one. So this is a Dev2 article, which basically is going to allow you to build a travel support agent with RAG and Postgres. Now, what's cool about this is this actually uses a relatively new feature of agents for Amazon Bedrock, a vectorized Amazon Aurora database, and it uses DynamoDB basically to support like passenger support information. So this does integrate with WhatsApp. So this is kind of a cool little step through tutorial, if you want, that touches basically retrieval augmented generation, large language models, Python, CDK, AWS, and a variety of different services. So whether you just want to do it for the CDK or you actually are interested in generative AI applications, this is a fabulous blog post to run through. And it does include, by the way, a four-step process as well as some you know, architecture that we're actually going to show you what you're going to build. So it's very cool. Number four, this is a blog post. It's not necessarily a tutorial, but it does have step-by-steps in it, which is basically how to use CloudWatch Synthetics to real-time watch a URL and get information about it, including alerts, and it has an integration with Slack and Chatbot. Okay, so this is on an article on Medium by one of AWS's community contributors. This basically is a hands-on project that's basically going to allow you to do that real-time monitoring. And so as you look at this, you can just see step-by-step -step what you're implementing and what you're doing in order to be able to run these synthetics against this particular service. So it includes sections on settings, what synthetics actually is a little bit of an overview, and a lot of other cool things. And its integration with Slack is just a bonus. Now, I wouldn't necessarily consider this a tutorial, but it, it, it is tutorial-esque. It's really just a blog post, but it's here in case you need it. Number five. Okay, so we have another feature. This one is very interesting. This basically allows you to set conditional rights for anything that you would put up on S3. So it basically allows you to check for the existence of an object before you create it. So this is a very interesting capability. So it's going to allow you to prevent applications from overwriting any existing objects, particularly if they're sensitive or unreplicatable when you upload data to S3. So like EFS, this is just an S3 feature, but it's an amazing one and something to be very keen about where instead of you having to write your own logic to do conditional writes with S3, it's now built into the service. Number six, so number six is interesting because this is all about generative AI loss. Now, these are collaborative spaces and immersive experiences inside of AWS. 
And the idea here is this is happening in major cities across the globe. And what's happening is that they're trying to provide cloud and AI expertise to people who need it, particularly around, of course, AWS's services. So if we click on the link here and take a look at it, what you'll see is this awesome page about generative AI loss. And this is all part of the AWS Start Startups program. And basically you can say, look, I want to find a location near me. Now, currently, these are the only locations. So I mentioned this because this is probably going to expand. I just wanted to let you know that there's an opportunity to not only attend these in person if you're in that city, but also they're probably going to make a lot of this virtual and there's going to be a lot of content that comes out of this. So just keep your eyes and ears open, particularly in the generative AI space, which again is not necessarily DevOps focused, but the ML ops side of things is going to quickly become an operational concern because who's going to run all these large language models? So understanding how the AWS services do this understanding how to host large language models, how to operationalize them, it's extremely important. Okay, number seven and number eight, as always, I save the best for last. They're the ones I'm most excited about. Number seven is a repo for the AWS CloudFormation Starter Kit. So this is very interesting because this is just a straight up repository. This is a starter kit that basically allows you to create CloudFormation stacks using this tool called Rain. And this tool is gonna give you a very structured approach that wraps around your stack and includes things like security checks, following best practices, validation. It can even generate documentation, right, to guide you through the setup and deployment process. This is a great space to start in order to understand some best practices when it comes to CloudFormation templates. Now, predominantly, most of us use Terraform. Sometimes, though, when you're dealing with clients, you don't have that option because they're so embedded in the AWS ecosystem they're either actually using CloudFormation or if they have a lot of developers who know like say Python or TypeScript, they could be even be using the CDK. Now operations folks typically recommend Terraform, but this is one of those great things to know about when you want to learn how to deal and navigate with CloudFormation templates. All right, number eight, tutorials. We love them, right? We need, we need the, the experience as well as the expertise. Our last tutorial is how to run WebAssembly on AWS EKS. So this is a step-by-step -step guide. This is very hands-on about how to run WASM on EKS. And so if we take a look at this, this is basically a, just a straight up tutorial blog post about first understanding how WebAssembly works, the custom AMI that you're gonna create in order to enable the necessary software to run WASM on basically EKS nodes. And so you're gonna use Packer, you're gonna use Terraform, right? You're gonna use Spin, you're gonna do Wasm Edge. You're also gonna do a runtime class definition that basically enables the EKS cluster to recognize WebAssembly workloads, right? And so this is excellent. Now, you're gonna need a bunch of tools, Packer, Terraform, kubectl, Finch, right? And you're gonna to need to clone the repository. But for anybody who wants to touch these tools, haven't seen it before, I mean, Packer is a staple, Terraform is a staple. The rest of this is all pretty much a staple. I don't deal with Finch a whole lot, but it's useful to, to explore and configure this. And so you're basically gonna build the AMIs, walk through a bunch of steps, launch the Terraform, apply it, you know, create your spin runtime, hook it into your you know, Kubernetes cluster, and this is just absolutely fabulous. So if you haven't done anything with EKS, you haven't used Packer before, you haven't run Wasm Edge in particular or Spin, great space to do this in. So we love tutorials, and so just wanted to make sure you had this. And that is number eight. As always, we've got the sources listed at the bottom. So you've got weeks one, two, three, and four. Some of this was actually pulled from the AWS open source newsletter as well. So there you go, all eight. So thanks again for watching. That's our AWS updates for August 2024. We hope you enjoy a little WebAssembly, a little CDK, some features with conditional rights with S3, and of course the throughput increases for EFS. I'm Michael Forster with CodeCloud. We'll see you next month for September's AWS Tidbits.